Hello everyone and welcome to my Mousy Makes podcast. In case you haven't met me before, I'm Helen and I live near Durham in the northeast of England. And I am a piano teacher, part-time, I work from home and spend most of the rest of my time making things, either here in my craft room or in, down in the kitchen. And I love going out for walks as well. And yeah, so on my podcast, you get all sorts of things, but mostly, you know, to do with uh, all the creative things that I enjoy doing. And today, what have I got for you today? <clears throat> well, I've got exciting news, which some of you might know if you've kind of been to Instagram first before you've watched this. Uh, and I am going to show you something that might seem a little bit random but I'll, I'll explain it more in a, in a short while which is I'm going to show you what's on a couple of my windowsills and if you've come here because you followed a hashtag to what's on my windowsill then you can and you only want to see that then you can just look in the timestamps below and you can just go straight straight to it and you don't have to listen to any of the other waffle that I'm doing but you might like to stay and listen to my waffle as well um yeah, so I've got that and then I'm going to show you a craft activity that I tried for the very first time a few days ago and yeah, uh, hopefully you'll be interested to see what I've been doing there and then we'll have a nice calm ending with a bit of piano music and <clears throat> and something else and I don't know if you can hear that but there's a great big lorry camp coming in the background there. Honestly, I've started this podcast so many times today because I've got a bit of a tickle in my throat and <laughs> I don't want to start it again. So excuse me if you hear any other noises or me coughing or something. <clears throat> anyway, right, that's enough waffle. My exciting news then is that I have published my story, my Enchanted Forest story. I've got to hold it just right so that there's not too much of a shiny reflection from the from the window over there. Um, in case you, you are visiting me for the first time, a quick bit of background about this book <clears throat> is that um, a few months ago on Instagram, uh, a couple of lovely ladies there, Dawn and Jeanette, and I'll leave uh, links to them below if you want to go and see what they're up to on Instagram and, and on YouTube. Uh, but they decided to have a make-along called the Enchanted Forest Make-along. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, yeah, that's for me. And you just had to make anything you like from wool <clears throat> that was to do with an enchanted forest and just post it on Instagram with, with the hashtag. Um, so, yeah, I started doing that. But uh, I didn't realise what it was actually going to end up as uh, because it wasn't long before my the characters that I was knitting, was knitting and crocheting <clears throat> uh, started to... <laughs> I don't know they almost formed a story by themselves um, and so I decided to go with that and create a story and that is how I've ended up with this tale from the Enchanted Forest. I've written a few stories before for my nieces and had them made into photo books just using one of those online um, you know photo book making <laughs> Uh, services that you can get um, and yeah so but, but I've only ever wanted one copy or maybe two copies because I've had one for myself uh, but this time I thought well that there are some of you out there who would be interested in buying a copy of the story so I thought well I, I need another way of doing it so somebody mentioned to me that I could look at self-publishing through Amazon which is free so I did that. Well, I wrestled for days, days and days, not just hours, to <clears throat> go through the whole process of producing a storybook. Uh, I had so many setbacks along the way. First of all, you had to submit your manuscript <clears throat> as a PDF and as a PDF document. And so I worked on that for quite a while, setting out my words and illustrations and that, uh, yeah, so that in itself took quite a while. And then finally I got to the point where I was able to submit it and it sat there for absolutely ages and ages and went away and came back. And when I came back, I found that it said, 
oh, sorry, but you need a minimum of 76 pages. And mine was 44 pages because I thought that I needed to keep it as short as possible. So I had to start again and <clears throat> this time spread out uh, my illustrations and words and things, which actually in the end is quite good because it's meant I could have bigger illustrations because um, in my first version I'd made some of them smaller to fit two on a page. So it was no bad thing apart from the time that it took. It took. So anyway, so that was successful. And then I think the most frustrating part of the process was actually creating the cover. And <clears throat> yeah, they provide you with a template that you can use, although you can submit your own cover. But that in itself was a bit complicated. I couldn't work out what size I needed to submit because it kept talking about trim size. And um, <clears throat> my understanding of it wasn't correct because when I first submitted a submitted the manuscript, lots of the my pages were chopped off around the edges and I thought I'd got the size right anyway. So uh, so I've ended up with a cover that is maybe not um, it's, it's not as I would really really like it to be but it's the best that I could manage with the software that I was <coughs> given to use. Um, it's uh, it's hardback. It's only hardback because I couldn't work out how to, if I could, um, order copies of um, paperback and hardback in the same, you know, in the same session that I was trying to do this. So for the moment, it's just in hardback. Uh, I, I was really, really nervous once it was, once it appeared on Amazon. I was excited as well to put in my name to Amazon and then my name came up, my book came up, I mean. Um, but I was really nervous about the, what the quality was going to be like. And so I ordered one copy. I didn't tell anybody at all that it was on Amazon. So I ordered one copy. Uh, and I think they probably print to order. So it takes a while. It takes about, mm, I think it's taken about 10 days. Yeah, about 10 days uh, for it to come. It's printed in Poland. So anyway, order my copy. I am very happy with the quality of it. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's nice. It's a lo lovely, sturdy book. Nice pages. Nice, nice, fairly thick pages. And uh, my illustrations have come out looking OK. Uh, maybe the, the colours are a little bit more faded than the original uh, drawings that I made, but, but they're OK. So yeah, so there we are, my book. So if you want to go and order one, you can just um, put my name into Amazon and or, or you can put the title of the book, A Tale from the Ad Enchanted Forest. And yeah, there we go. I, I don't think it's going to be a bestseller, but it's there for anybody who fancies having a copy. So there we go. Right then, so next. Here's just a little sequence um, of my two of my windowsills because I have been watching uh, the lovely podcast with um, Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful. I've been watching it for quite quite a long while now, and she's been doing Vlogtober's. And a few days ago, uh, I think. It was partly because she didn't have much happening. I think she'd been at work and she didn't have much happening. And for that particular day, she, you know, she came up with, uh, she was very creative, uh, came up with the idea of talking about the things on her windowsills in her house. And she just said that she was going to <clears throat> make a hashtag of what's on your windowsill. I think that's it. I'll, I'll put it on the screen, actually, um, uh, when, I, when I edit this. Uh, and um, and she's so she invited anybody else who is a who does vlogs to show what's on their windowsill and um, and and then use the hashtag and then if she searches for it she can go and look at other people's windowsills. <laughs> I know that seems a bit funny, but it's I don't know. It's really interesting seeing what other people have on their windowsills. Uh, so yeah, so I am going to show you what is on my kitchen windowsill and utility room windowsills. I thought I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, I haven't tidied them up at all, but it's just, I'm just going to show you what is there on my windowsills. <laughs> Enjoy. 
So here is my kitchen windowsill and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about each thing on there, although maybe not the dishwasher uh, pot. <laughs> yeah, so there's my kitchen windowsill. And so first of all, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about each thing. Um, the first thing in here, this thing, is, this is not usually on here. This is a mug that has been beautifully painted, hand painted by my daughter for her, my husband, her dad, and you will see now why it is on the windowsill. Oh dear, he has just recently dropped it and you can see the handle inside there. So that is very sad. He is going to mend it, although I'm not sure it's going to be uh, usable again. And then next to it, we've, I've got a little teapot with a hedgehog tea cosy on it. Uh, well, it's a hedgehog with quite a long nose. It's kind of an elephant hedgehog. That was a lovely gift from somebody a few Christmases ago. Then we have my pot that contains dishwashing things. And I do like this very much. Uh, you can't really see the colour because obviously the light is behind us, but there you can see it was in the Nigella Lawson range of kitchen things that I bought quite a long time ago. I like that colour. Next along is this um, slightly sad looking plant. And you can see it's got quite a lot of dead leaves around it. Well, I was given this and I thought it was a fake plant. I didn't realise it needed watering. Um, and uh, yeah, so obviously it suffered a bit. But I don't know what kind it is. It's some kind of succulent. It's very lovely, but I honestly thought it was made of plastic. So uh, it does get watered now occasionally, but I don't know, it's still clinging on to life. Clinging on like this little sloth here, clinging on to the edge of it. Next along is this lovely jug and some wooden tulips, which if you ever go to Amsterdam or really anywhere in the Netherlands, you will see these on sale everywhere. But they're so lovely and bright and they never die. I found this jug in Ikea, which just seemed perfect for them. And then, almost finally, I have this beautiful brass colander, which actually does need a bit of a, uh, a clean again. My husband found it in an antique shop and spent hours and hours polishing it to give it to me as a, a Christmas present. And then the final thing on my window <laughs> windowsill here in the kitchen is just a um, kitchen towel holder, a marble one there, which was actually a wedding present. And so yeah. And now we're in my utility room. You can probably hear the swishy noises coming from the freezer, which is on my left. There is my uh, metal bucket of pegs that I use for hanging out my washing. Really like that. And just a little mini copper pan. I was just given that quite recently. I haven't used it, so I decided to put it just there on display. Uh, here we have a plant, uh, one that is not really in much better condition than the one you saw in the kitchen. Uh, it has a dead flower on it. It's a... Uh, can you see that? Let's focus on it, please. No, oh, it's deciding not to focus on it. Oh, there we go. Um, that's what kind of plant it is. It doesn't require much water or care and it has been flowering for oh, I don't know, firing on and off, should I say, for probably seven or eight years I've had it. So, yeah, it's quite a good plant. And currently, this is not normally on here, is a pumpkin, a rather weird looking pumpkin, I have to say. We get a veg bag every week and this was in this week's veg bag, but my husband is allergic to pumpkins if he eats them. So it's just there as a decoration at the moment but I'll probably move it somewhere else. Then I have some string and it's decided not to focus on it. That's not really helpful. There we go. Some string and scissors, very handy to have. And then finally, this rather old um, brass 
well, I don't think it's proper brass, um, plant sprayer thing, which doesn't work terribly well, but it looks rather nice, doesn't it? It doesn't need a bit of a polish as well. But there you go. So that's that windowsill. <laughs> so there, there we are, my windowsills. Hope you enjoyed that. And if you do a, a vlog or a podcast or something and you'd like to join in, just, just use that hashtag and um, you can see what's on your windowsills as well. <laughs> so anyway, after all that excitement of, of my book and uh, windowsills, <coughs> uh, let, let's have a bit of calm, crafty chat now, I think. Uh, I, I really, really haven't got much to show you at the moment because so much... I think probably apart from a Yuletide blanket, everything else I'm making is going to be for gifts for people and I don't want to show them in case they happen to pop by to my podcast and see them. Uh, so, But my Yuletide blanket is going well. That's the Attic 24 pattern. Yeah, I've got about 10 rounds to go. It's a square blanket. I've got about 10 rounds to go, which is going to take quite a while because obviously the uh, sides are quite long now. Um, and then after that, I think the border is about seven rounds or something. So I, I've still got a fair bit of time that I need to put into that. And I'm not doing very much of it at the moment. Maybe if I'm lucky, one round a day, but not even every day, actually. And yeah, so all the other things I'm making are either gifts or they're to, something to do with Vlogmas. And I have all sorts of surprises um, <coughs> coming up for you from the 1st of December. But more of that another time because I'm not giving anything away at the moment. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, so that's so I decided the other day when I was actually thinking about oh God, when I when I next chat to you, I haven't really got anything to show you that I've been making. So I decided that I would try something new. Now, if you've been here a few times before, you'll know I'm always going on about how you should just just have a go at something new. Don't be afraid of it. Just have a go. And of course, I have to then apply that to myself. And quite a few months ago, I bought myself uh, this journal, this uh, just plain brown journal, um, <clears throat> with the intention of doing something a bit more arty in it than just my bullet journal where I uh, mostly write things and list things and draw little pictures and put stickers and washi tape in. I thought I'd do something a bit more... Um, Party. And for absolutely ages, um, I've been collecting bits and bobs that I've cut out of magazines, maybe little pictures that I've liked and thought, oh, I might use that one day or um, or even just sections of a lovely colour on a page uh, in a magazine. So they're all collected together in a uh, and I just keep them in a folder with a four display pockets in them. So, yeah, and I've just gathered and gathered them and done nothing with them, really. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, and I really wanted to use those in some way in this uh, journal that I'd bought. Um, so over the past uh, year, out probably, at least, I've been watching lots of YouTube tutorials on people creating look, different kinds of art journals. But anyway, so I've really fancied having a go myself and I even bought a book a few months ago called Journal Sparks just to help me get started. And yeah, so and it's a lovely book. It's got all sorts of lovely ideas in it, um, you know, which all look very approachable and <laughs> uh, but which I, I just hadn't I hadn't used it. The book was just sitting there on my shelf and. I think I was just a little bit afraid of it not looking very good when I had a go. Uh, you know, you, you do doubt yourself so much sometimes, don't you? Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, so I decided after watching lots of these tutorials and having a little look through my journals, Journal Sparks book that uh, I wanted to create a place for keeping lots of those inspiring quotes, inspiring words and together and in the first place I decided to start with a, the simple patchwork of squares 
using different shades of green. I just knew I had lots of bits of uh, green, green paper and, and uh, bits from magazines. And so I started cutting out squares. And as you can hopefully see from what I'm showing you, I didn't measure an exact square as a template, although you could, but I was quite happy to have more of a rustic higgledy-piggledy look. <laughs> um, and I had such a lovely relaxing time just cutting out lots of squares. And then when I thought I had enough, I laid them all out in as random a pattern as I could. It's always hard to do random actually. And, um, you know, so basically I didn't want to the same next door to each other. And so it was really nice just fiddling around with these bits of paper. Um, I think it would also look nice uh, as a, a, like a proper patchwork pattern so that you're actually not trying to be random and place the colours in a in a pattern. But um, I might do that another time. And I also thought that this simple method would make a very nice greetings card. Um, anyway, once everything was stuck down, I chose some of the quotes that I'd either saved from magazines or which I'd printed out from my own collection of saved quotes on Pinterest that I was mentioning. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed this slow process of cutting around the words, thinking about them as I positioned them on the page. And... You may recognise some of these quotes from the start of uh, today's podcast, which is why I put those ones there. So I finished that page and was enjoying myself so much that I thought I'd do another page. And this time I thought I'd try more of a picture collage because, you know, when I was when I'd been emptying out all of the pictures I'd saved, I saw lots of lovely little pictures. And I thought, you know, why am I just keeping them hidden away? And so I decided to use those and I thought I'd continue with the green theme for this page so I just selected uh, kind of a few pictures that fitted a general nature theme and started arranging the things on the page. Uh, I just found the whole process very relaxing indeed and um, things just seemed to fall into place in a pleasing way you know just shuffle them about a bit and it it was um, it was just a very um, nice process to go through. And once I felt ready that uh, that the pictures were in a nice position, I just started gluing them into place. And then I chose another selection of quotes to cut out and stick onto the page. So, and uh, well, I really was I was really into it by this time, and decided to do another page. <laughs> Um, I ended up doing this for quite a few hours in the day, actually. And uh, another time, I probably wouldn't plan to do it for quite so long. But anyway, amongst the things I saved from old magazines were were these hexagons that were just printed on a page in a magazine. Uh, so I chose one and cut it out. And then I decided to make a patchwork of hexagons this time instead of squares. And this time using shades of blue. So again, I didn't try to cut out really accurate hexagons, so I could have found myself a template. I have got some for patchwork, but um, but I just decided to cut around the original hexagon. Um, and I don't mind that it, again; it doesn't the the, the shapes don't fit um, exactly together. But I had a really really lovely time, and um, and when I finished that page, I did one more page. So here's just a little bit more of my collage in this new journal. So I'm definitely keen to add more to this journal now that I've started it. You can see I haven't done the front cover yet. Uh, 
that was a conscious decision because I wanted to play about with some different ideas and things inside the book first. And I, I think maybe then I'll I'll know what kind of thing I want to have on the front. Um, but I'm going to call it a journal of inspirational words. And it will probably mostly be quotes, but I might put some bits of poems in and things as well. So well, I'm quite excited to do some more of that. Yeah, so one of the things that really pleases me about it is that um, it means that if I want to look at some inspiration words, which some, sometimes I do, sometimes I'm just in a mood and think, yeah, I just need to, I need something inspirational to, to read. Um, then I'll go to Pinterest usually. That's my first port of call. Well, Pinterest is fantastic, but it can, without you realising it, eat up so much time. Um, and you know once you're on your phone or iPad scrolling through Pinterest um, you know you might then think oh I'll just go and check on Instagram and oh, I'll go and check on this or that and before you know it you've you've just used loads of time so I think this um, journal here is going to be a really lovely non-electronic way to spend a bit of time instead of picking up my iPad <laughs> so um, I'm just going to finish today with with a few um, few bits of video that I've taken recently when I've been out on my walks. Uh, the countryside around is gradually looking more and more autumnal. Uh, I'm actually going to uh, read you a poem as well called November because when this podcast first go out, goes out, it will be the first of November, and it's a lovely poem. Um, it's kind of the poet saying that a lot of um, poems that are written about November are a bit kind of gloomy, but this poet um, can see the good side of being in November. So here we are, just a, a little calming end to my podcast today. November by Elizabeth Stoddard Much have I spoken of the faded leaf Long have I listened to the wailing wind and watched it ploughing through the heavy clouds for autumn charms my melancholy mind. When autumn comes, the poets sing a dirge. The year must perish, all the flowers are dead. The sheaves are gathered and the mottled quail runs in the stubble, but the lark has fled. Still, autumn ushers in the Christmas cheer the holly berries and the ivy tree. They weave a chaplet for the old year's hair. These waiting mourners do not sing for me. I find sweet peace in depths of autumn woods, where grow the ragged ferns and roughened moss. The naked, silent trees have taught me this. The loss of beauty is not always loss. I think all I need to say now is um, is my goodbye. <laughs> uh, time for me to go. Uh, thank you ever so much if you've watched the whole podcast. Well done, <laughs> all the way through to here. Uh, and yes, I hope you'll want to come back another time. And so, just take care of yourselves, and I hope you keep nice and busy, do lots of lovely creative things. And I will see you again very very soon. Okay. Bye.